I'm Ashok. I'm a lead project management trainer at Skillogic. One of the frequently asked questions is should I pursue PRINCE 2 certification or PMP certification? Which suits my career better? And many questions like which exam is more tougher? Can I make it in the first attempt? And how much exam preparation time it takes? Also questions like I'm moving to US or, or UK which certification better suits which has more recognition and obvious questions like which will give me more salary hikes and a better job you would have got some advices from your friends colleagues such as i am pmp certified i can tell you that pmp is the best it is a bit tough but once you crack it you will get top project management jobs well prince 2 is the standard in our organization Get Prince2 certified. It is the best. I am confused now. Prince2 or PMP? Let's compare Prince2 versus PMP from three perspectives. Exam, perspective, content or technical differences between Prince2 and PMP and most important, popularity, which is, which is better for your career. Prince2 is awarded by Exelos, an UK-based organization, a part of UK government. PMP is awarded by PMI, Project Management Institute, a non-profit organization based in US. Prince2 is released in year 1996. Coincidentally, PIMBOK is also published in 1996. Prince2 Foundation has no mandatory requirements, although Prince2 practitioner requires Prince2 Foundation as a prerequisite. For PMP, a graduate requires 4,500 hours of project management experience, roughly three years of project management experience, and 35 contact hours training certificate to apply for PMP exam. Exam fees for Prince2 Foundation practitioner combined is 500 US dollars approximately. PMP exam fees along with one year PMI membership is 555 US dollars. Training fees remains more or less same for both Prince2 and PMB. For a classroom training in India, it costs you about 150 US dollars or roughly 10,000 Indian rupees. If you are looking at, looking at the classroom trainings in UK, US and, and other countries, it varies from 500 US dollars to 1000 US dollars. If you are looking for an online uh, or self-learning options it would be costing you around uh, 100 US dollars Prince2 requires a receipt exam every five years to keep the validity for PMP PMP certification needs to be renewed every three years by submitting 60 PDUs PDUs are professional development units gathered by attending other management courses or by attending the seminars conducted by PMI. Exam Booking Most of the authorized training organizations, ATOs, hold the license of authorized exam organization as well. So candidates can complete exam through the same training institute, making it really easy and hassle-free. Prince2 can also be taken at prometric centers across the globe, but most prefer channel is taken through AUOs. Though there is a provision for paper-based exam for PMP, pass percentage is relatively low. This may be because given the exam duration and complexity remains the same, the paper-based test is less convenient compared to the computer-based test, which has tools to easily browse, review the exam questions rather than flipping papers. For this reason, most of the candidates prefer computer-based PMP tests at Prometric centers. After PMP application is approved by PMI, exam slots need to be booked in advance through online booking at your nearest Prometric centers. I'm sure you remember the moment after completion of last exam in your graduation. And yet, we are here talking about another exam preparation. Prince2 Foundation exam is focused on your understanding of Prince2 framework and terminologies. 
it's a simple multiple choice questions 75 questions one hour you need 50 percent right answers to pass it's a closed book exam no negative marking Prince to practitioner exam is focused on applying your prints to knowledge this is a scenario based exam five different types of objective questions 80 questions 2.5 hours you need 55 percent marks to pass it's an open book exam no negative marking whereas pmp exam is designed to test candidate skills as a project manager based on PIMBOK guidelines it's a simple objective type questions 200 questions out of 200 175 are real questions which are the questions which are marked 25 questions or trial questions which is which means that doesn't have any mark but it's really difficult to distinguish between them so it's 200 questions you need to answer within four hours it's a closed book exam also has no negative marking whether it's prints 2 or pmp you need to really study again in case of pmp it's your discipline to keep up the preparation for 30 40 days spending about two to three hours a day that gets you ready for the pmp exam but if you follow a proven study plan and prepare yourself with exam taking strategies well clearing certification exam is not as difficult as perceived prince 2 and pmp both are project management framework so technically how different are they Prince2 is a process-based project management methodology. Explains what should you do to manage a successful project. Whereas PMP is a knowledge-based approach to project management. Explains what you should know to enable you to manage projects with good practices. Prince2 is a prescriptive framework, captures best practices and tells you what to do. Focuses on processes for starting controlled execution and closing of projects. PMP is a descriptive framework, explains knowledge areas such as risk, time management, cost management, etc. in detail with good practices. Prince2 is a set of integrated processes, themes and principles which cannot be used in isolation. Whereas PMP, each topic or knowledge area can be referred in isolation. It's a kind of plug and play model. Prince2, all project roles are clearly defined. PMP mostly focuses on project manager role and how a project manager can perform his duties better to execute the project more successfully. Prince2, unique concept of tiring approach to adapt to any project enables the framework to be highly scalable and flexible. Whereas PMP is focused on knowledge areas, does not offer such flexibility. If you read both Prince2 manual and the PIMBO guide, you will understand how much similarities is there between the two despite the differences in terminology. This shouldn't surprise you because they are both focused on project management. Themes in Prince2 is very similar to knowledge areas in PMP. We have seven themes in Prince2. Business case, organization, quality, plans, risk, change and progress and we have 10 knowledge areas in PIMBOK guide integration scope time cost quality human resource risk communication procurement and stakeholder management business case theme in Prince 2 covers time cost integration knowledge areas from PIMBOK guide organization theme is discussed in human resource communications and stakeholders management knowledge areas quality theme is covered in quality knowledge area Plans theme is covered as aspects of knowledge areas in time, cost, scope and human resource. Risk theme is covered in risk knowledge area. Change and progress theme are covered in integration knowledge areas. Procurement knowledge area is not included in Prince2 themes. Processes in Prince2 is referred as process groups in PIMBOK guide and activities in Prince2 is referred as processes in PIMBOK. Prince2 has seven processes. Starting up a project, Prince2 process is covered as a part of initiating process group in PIMBOK guide. Initiating a project, 
Prince 2 process is covered as initiating and planning process groups in BIMBOK guide. Directing a project is covered as monitoring and controlling process group. Controlling a stage, managing product delivery, managing stage boundary processes in Prince 2 are covered in executing, monitoring and controlling, and planning process groups in PIMBOK guide. Closing a project Prince 2 process is covered as closing process group in PIMBOK guide. One of the most important questions, which is more popular, PRINCE2 or PMP? Industry preferences. Both PRINCE2 and PMP are industry neutral standards, which means that they can be adopted for projects in any industry. In some cases, such as an ITIL IT infrastructure project may have more preference to PRINCE2 as ITIL and PRINCE2 come from same origins, XLOs, and have better alignment of processes and terms. On a similar lines, PMI publishes complementary guidelines for specific industries such as construction, manufacturing, etc. It would be easy to adapt PMP with complementary guidelines for such projects. Scale of the project PMI PMP is usually not considered for small projects, whereas PRINCE2 with the tailoring approach allows it to scale from a small project to a large size project. Regional preferences this is the most important aspect in terms of popularity. PRINCE2 and PMP have a strong regional preferences based on their origins. As you can see from the table, PMP is most preferred as a first choice in USA, whereas PRINCE2 is less preferred. In UK, PRINCE2 is the standard. It's the most preferred is the standard for all kinds of projects, including IT projects and government projects. In Canada, PMP is predominantly used. In Europe, PRINCE2 is most preferred. All EC Commission projects or European Union projects are managed by PRINCE2 framework, pin to pin. In Middle East, it's getting more PRINCE2 preferred. The first preference goes to PRINCE2 and then PMP. In Asian countries, including India, PRINCE2 and PMP are equally preferred. In Australia, PRINCE2 is more preferred. Rather than comparing PRINCE2 and PMP as two competing standards, it's probably better to say they are complementary approaches to project management. PRINCE2 providing a structured methodology to execute the project in a life cycle steps and PMP providing more detailed knowledge on tools and techniques. This is the reason I generally advise project management aspirants to aim to pursue both the certifications. Then, it becomes a question of which is first? You should be already having an answer for this question by now. And if you're still not here, feel free to drop an email to ashok at skilllogic.com and I shall surely contact you to, to provide further clarifications. I wish you a very best in your career. Have a great one.